Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So it's Thursday afternoon and I wanted to just sit down and spend maybe about half an hour or so, three quarters of an hour on creating an art journal page. Um, I wanted to use this stencil that I purchased or picked up um, recently for next to nothing at my local art store. Now, when I originally picked the packet up, um, I looked at it, I thought, oh look, great stencil and there's another four in the range. When I actually got it home and opened it up, no, you actually got all five in the packet. Um, and I think I paid less than two pounds for all five of these stencils. Now, they are very thin. That they're literally die cut pieces of plastic sheeting. It's not mylar, it's not going to be heat resistant or anything like that. It's literally not good for anything other than probably putting paint through or drawing. But I wanted to use this one because I kind of like this. Um, and this is the kind of um, kind of whimsy kind of mood that I'm in today. Um, the sun's shining. We've just had almost a week of fog. Um, and the sun's out today and the fog's gone. So it's kind of lifted my spirits a little bit. So yeah, I, can't, I thought I'm going to use this stencil. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to, um, I'm just going to use paint today. Um, I'm not going to use, I might use stamps or something, maybe later on, but for the time being, I'm just going to use paint. So I've cleaned off all those brushes that we've been talking about for ages and ages that have been sat on the windowsill for a, nearly a year soaking because I'd left them to go hard and it's taken a year for the um, for it all to come off again with the cleaner. I know there is stuff out there you can get that's, you know, we'll do it quicker than that, but literally I just put them on the windowsill and left them. Um, they're great now, they work absolutely fantastic. So I'm using Decoir Americana paints. This is Indian turquoise. It's a really nice kind of blue colour. I'm not putting down any gesso at all on the page none whatsoever and I'm going to mix in some light buttermilk just on the brush so that I didn't shake it today it's a good job none came out I'd have probably just ended up with a load of binder um they're gonna come out now yes there you go so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up the blue and I'm gonna just pick up a little bit on one edge you probably can't see that very well there you go just on one edge and then put the paint in and what you get is a kind of um, soft kind of tone into that which kind of makes it look if you want to do skies it kind of gives you that um, mottled colour without being a total just flat colour so you can build in some nice texture and depth into your painting without actually having to put um, a huge amount down or spend a lot of time learning how to do clouds or anything like that. And I'm just going to go around that shape really easily, a bit loose, just grab a bit more of that light colour and just blend it in because I don't want, like I said, a total flat colour blue. That should do just like that. So blue, get a bit of buttermilk and then just paint away. I will take these clips off eventually, in fact I can do it now. It's only because I've glued two pages together just to make a little bit of a, a thicker page to work on. And it was curling a little bit, so there we go, just blend that buttermilk in with the blue. If you think you've gone a bit too far, just add a bit more blue to it. Blue, bit of buttermilk. I've put some kitchen towel just underneath the page. Just because. And then we'll just bring that off that way. Just because I like to bring the page over. and just carry on building it up. I'll just go around the heart first. Uh, 
and I can use a smaller more detail brush in a second once I've got the bulk of the paint down. Brush that off the page. A nice kind of happy blue colour. Really nice kind of bright blue. Just like the colour of the sky today. Get rid of that too. And like I said, this is just going to be a quick kind of art journal page. I know what I want to try and do, what I want to try and to achieve with this page. So oop, a bit too much paint on there, but never mind. A bit more of that white, a bit more of the buttermilk I should say. Just to kind of break up that blue. There we go, that'll do. Okay, let me get that dried off and then I'll be back. The blue's now dry and as you can see, I've brought out some red colors. So I've got cherry red and true red. So one darker red, one lighter red, but I've also still got that buttermilk to hand as well to lighten up when I need to. So again, oh, I must remember to put a big note on this box. Don't forget to shake it. Shake it to wake it. And then we'll have some of that, which I haven't shaken again. Some of that true red, which is a lighter shade. Just about there. And then we'll have some of that buttermilk just off to one side there. And this time I'm going to use a smaller brush. I would normally use a smaller, more detailed brush. Let's see what I've got hiding in my stash. Have I got a very small square flat? Yes, I have. There we go. Those three will do. These were bought really, really cheaply um, from my local craft store a couple of years ago. Don't use them that often. Anyway, right, so cherry red. Let's paint in. This heart. So I did draw um, the heart shape through the stencil before I got to painting. So it makes it a bit easier to follow because I can still see um, the pencil line, but we are allowed a wee bit of artistic license, so we don't have to stick slavishly to the shape if we don't want to, which we don't. We don't, do we? No, we don't. And then just go over, feeling in the shape, and I'm using, and it's acrylic, so you're not going to get you're not going to get an impasto effect uh, unless you use some form of um, thickener or medium in with it. But that's not what I'm after today. I don't want a kind of. Imp I don't want an impasto. But I'm going to pick up some of that lighter red now. Just start filling in. So this is where I need that more detail brush, the smaller detail brush, because this one's a bit too big. It doesn't matter too much if we go a little bit over the line. 
it's not a kind of painting by numbers. Bit of dark, darker red, let's go over a little bit. Cherry red, cherry red, like lipstick, but not that I'd know. There we go. Just kind of blend it a little bit. Right, I'm going to pick up some of that buttermilk now, just to kind of create a lighter pink. Just like that, and then I can blend that to my heart content if it's too light add some dark if it's too dark add some light bit of light, pick up a little bit of light, yeah, okay, so again, let's get that dried off. Okay, so that's dry now, so I'm going to come back in with that lighter shade of red and just tone down just a little bit of that because it's a little bit too much. Just tone it down a tad. Clean the brush and then just pick up some of that pure buttermilk. There we go. Like a little bit of whimsy. Okay, just get that dried off. So they're dry. I've had to put the clips back on because the page has started to curl with the paint and that red was an absolute nightmare to clear up. It just seemed to go everywhere. Not good at all. A very strong pigment in those paints. Okay so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add some more drawing to this now. I want to add some really kind of cute and kind of whimsical um, like wings, <laughs> if you know what I mean. That kind of affair. So let's follow the line. Should do us. Doesn't have to be perfect. 
it's only a whimsical painting when all said and done. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some white and I'm going to go over, just using that small detail brush again. Make sure it's dry, or as dry as. Pick up some white and then I'm just going to go around and fill in that area. Just kind of outline. And this is where you can do a little bit of your finessing if you want to. So I always say that I'm not very good at painting. But what I can do is I can colour in with paint. Because there is a bit of a difference. <laughs> I'm not a good painter. If you ask me to sit down and paint a landscape or do a portrait of somebody, not a chance. But if you want me to do a colouring in using paint, I'm your man. Bit of a difference. It's not that I don't have the imagination, it's just I don't have the... I haven't ever really sat down or stood, in the case of being a painter, and took the time to actually learn how to do portraits or, um, or, or landscape painting. But to be honest, um, I'm not a huge fan of kind of like landscapes or portraits. Um, I do like some, but I am definitely more of an, an abstract kind of guy. Um, I would much rather have a piece of abstract art on my wall than a figurative piece. Um, although I do really love um, kind of religious iconography. As if I can pronounce it properly, icons, religious paintings. I just love the style and the way that the artists um, seem to get the light in some of those paintings are just absolutely beautiful. Um, but I'm going to have to go off the page here, I'm sorry. There we go, bring it back in so you can see. Um, so I do love paintings of religious kind of scenery um, or scenes from the Bible I love that kind of thing but like I said um, whether I'd want a piece of that on my bedroom wall or my living room wall I don't know maybe a small piece um, but I'd much rather have a piece of abstract um, I've recently been looking for a piece to hang um, on my own suite or in the own suite in the back bedroom and I was looking for an original piece of abstract art and oh my goodness um, there are some really good pieces of abstract and then there's some absolute awful pieces um, some people seem to think that abstract is okay, just you know, just slap paint on a page or on a canvas, and because the label it abstract, it doesn't have to do or be anything. But I mean, if you just take the time to look at what's out there, you can recognize straight away a piece of good abstract as a piece to uh, a piece from somebody who doesn't know what they're doing at all. And there's unfortunately more out there. Um, who don't know what they're doing, who just seem to think that abstract means they can slap paint down, then there are people who can create pieces of abstract art that do look um, like they have meaning. Like I said, just put in original abstract art into eBay or something like that and see what comes up and you'll see exactly what I mean. 
anyway right so moving on I'm not going to um, dry those just yet I'm going to put some of that buttermilk down just to kind of warm that white up a little bit and then I'm going to just start adding in see it stands out so much more now on that white that's if the camera's picking it up probably isn't but trust me putting that white down first really has kind of made that buttermilk pop I think I've got a hair in this side let's come off the brush get off it's not going to come off there it is right, let's cover that back over nobody would ever know Let's get some of that white and then just add some strokes in with the white just to kind of give it a little bit of an impression maybe of a few feathers it's probably not showing up very well on there because the light um, the camera's probably not sophisticated enough it's not Hugely expensive camera, but okay. I want to get that dry now. Okay, the wings are dry, so the next is I've got some slate grey, and I've still got the white and the buttermilk just there, so I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that grey with the white just to kind of get a bit of an off-white and then I'm just going to kind of pick up a little bit of colour I'm probably going to forget to talk, so I do apologise. Just kind of creating a little bit of shadow. Just mixing a real, real light shade. Maybe a bit too light there, I think. And if you've gone a bit too light or a bit too dark, just mix in some more of those colours. This is the reason why I didn't put it away. You can see I've started to build up just a little bit of shadow. Just subtly. bit of that just mix your colours I do, I do keep forgetting to talk sorry it's just I'm trying to I want to say concentrate but <laughs> just to give it a little bit of lift Ooh. 
I mean, about too much there. And this is the beauty about acrylics. You can go back in. Because they do dry pretty quickly. And cover up most mistakes. But I'm sure you won't make any. Gonna grab some of that grey. Just neat. that'll do that will do for that for now okay let's get that dried off okay so I've put the paint away and I've brought out Distress Ink Speckled Egg which is a kind of bluey grey and I've got this very very old stencil from a company called That Special Touch here in the UK um, and what's this one called? It just says Distress Dots. Um, and I'm going to add some of these into the background just using this speckled egg which I have never used before. I've literally just taken the wrapper off it. So let's see what colour. Let's see if I've not got it contaminated. So this theoretically should just be a sympathetic colour. There you go. And I know I'm using a water-based ink over the top of acrylic paint, but that's fine. I only want a very subtle kind of effect in that background. Don't want it, you can see there, look. I don't want anything too in your face. And then we could just put a little bit up there just to kind of tone that in. Not that I ever use that page anyway, but just to add that little bit of difference in there, just into that background, just to kind of make it look not quite flat, but you know what I mean. Or at least I hope you know what I mean. Okay, now remember when I said I'd put the paint away? <laughs> Change my mind. So I'm going to put a little bit of that white there, I want some water. That should do. Get my fan brush. And then we're going to just add a little bit. Of that into that background. Maybe something a bit heavier up there, that'll do. Yes, like it, like it. Okay, let's get it dried off. So all those splatters are now dry and I didn't manage to get any all of my trousers which is an absolute miracle. Uh, I've also managed to get some of my hands all the way up there. Um, so all I have to do now is to add my little quilt which I've printed off on the computer. So all I'm going to do is just to add some glue with a glue stick. In this case it's a 
Uh, Diane Reevely Dilusions Creative Diary Glue Stick, which is the triangle one. And this is the last one out of all the ones that I bought, so I may need to order some more. So the quote that I'm going to put in, obviously, is that one. It had to have that word in there somewhere. And then oh, I can hear footsteps coming up the stairs, which means Mr. Ian has made me a cup of coffee. How good is that? How's, how's that for service? I'd be more excited if the dog had made you a cup of coffee. <laughs> the, dog is far too, the dog is far too tired after his WALK. Afternoon, everyone. <laughs> in fact, talk of the devil. Hello, Mr. Jingly Jangly. <laughs> He's trying to find Mr. Teddy. So you can go throw them around. There we go. So let's put that about there again. Not an overly complicated art journal page. Again, only a few layers. We've got the blue mottled background. We've got that stencil work with the speckled egg. We've got the white splatters and then we've got our focal point, which is that painted image um, of the heart with the wings. And of course, that quote, love is how you earn your wings. So the only thing I'm going to do is just to finish off just by adding some little boxes around those quotes just to kind of make them pop off the page in Art Journal Styly. The obligatory box around the quotes, which is what we all do. It's one of those Art Journal basic techniques and tropes that we all seem to fall back on just to give our pages a little bit of pop. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and highlight just to make everything pop with that black pen and I'm not being perfectly exact with it because this is an art journal page and we don't need to be perfectly exact. Flip it upside down, but it just adds a little bit extra, just makes those little elements pop off the page, and then when you've got your black boxes around your, your quote, it just kind of ties it all together. Finishes it all off, if you know what I mean. And you could get a little bit scribbly with this if you want to. Doesn't have to be perfect of course. So we can get a wee bit scribbly with it and then I'm just going to go around the wings. Which is why I wasn't too particularly bothered about the pencil marks still showing up because I knew I was going to finish off just by adding these, um, I suppose you could call them cartoony lines, <laughs> if that's how you want to describe them. There we go. And then all I'm going to do down here is just to sign it and date it, which is, what is it today? 12th. Is it 12th? Mm, it is the 12th. Friday the 13th tomorrow. Oh, 12th. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so the 12th of November 2020. As my friend Gina says, the year of Mondays. <laughs> and that's it, that's all I'm going to do for this art journal page. Um, like I said, it was only going to take about half an hour anyway. It was just one of those little whimsical pages that I fancied doing. Um, I don't know why, just with the fog lifting today and the sun shining and having nice bright blue skies, but also I was talking to mum and dad about Christmas today as well um, and making arrangements for them to come over to spend the Christmas week with us. So I feel kind of happyish today, which is why I've got a kind of jolly, whimsical art journal page to share with you today. So I hope you've enjoyed watching that art journal page come together. If you have, 
please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. But I'd also like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels, because without you, these videos definitely wouldn't be possible. Thank you. So that's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. Say bye, Ian. Bye, Ian.